So I've been relying on my Sony FX3 over these last two-ish years. I put it through tons of client work, personal projects, as well as using it for here on YouTube. And because of all its variety, I've been able to see firsthand just how versatile this FX3 truly is. And over these years, I've been constantly changing up the different ways I rig up the Sony FX3 depending on the job. There's times where I have it stripped down and there's times where I have it rigged up. So as time went on, I started to notice a trend in the different ways I was rigging up my FX3. And I soon realized that I had three main categories of rigs that I would choose from. And I gave them the names minimal, hybrid, and full kit. And it's been extremely helpful having three different styles of rigs to choose from because it completely takes out the guesswork of rigging that I should be doing for the job. And whenever I get a job, I can pick a path. And when I get more details, I can definitely fine tune that rig according to the project. And having these three styles of rigs has made my life so much easier. It's given me so much confidence in my FX3 because I know that my camera package is completely taken care of. So before I walk you guys through all my camera rigs, I wanna share with you guys the bare essential accessories I use no matter what camera kit I'm using. So starting off, I'm always using the Sony battery and the Sony chargers. Right now I have four batteries and two chargers in my kit and this has worked out great for all of the projects that I'm working on. I personally tend to stay away from third-party batteries and chargers because they often bring up a lot of issues. I've heard that third-party batteries can fry or break your camera or just simply not work or they don't have as much battery life as the proper manufacturer batteries. So for me since I'm doing all this for work I don't want anything on set that will create issues or create instability with my camera setup. So for me the extra $50 per battery is well worth it for that peace of mind and I recommend that you do the same if you're doing this for work and I'm so much of a stickler with this that I won't even mix third-party chargers with my Sony batteries it's not even worth it because there's different power draws and so much nuance between the setups that I don't want to end up screwing up my nicer Sony batteries with a third-party charger so I never throw my batteries on third-party chargers I always stick them on my own Sony chargers just because I want the best longevity and best stability out of these batteries alongside of that I always ball out on SD cards because I've had SD cards fail in the past or have SD cards that aren't fast enough. So for me personally, I'm always using ProGrade or AngelBird SD cards, always in V90. V90 is completely overkill for a lot of the stuff that I do because I primarily shoot in 24 frames, maybe 30 and maybe 60. But outside of that, I'm never using 120 or 240. But having the V90 cards just give me that ceiling in case I have projects that require me to shoot in those frame rates. Alongside of that, I use the Nisi IRND 3 and 6 stop ND filters. You've probably noticed from my other videos that I've been on this ND filter journey and I feel like I finally found the best ND filters. I'll leave links to the videos down below for the reasons why I swapped from VND to fix NDs. And to carry all of these accessories, I love this Moment 2 liter fanny pack. Pretty much on every shoot, I have this fanny pack with me, no matter if it's a client shoot, travel shoot, or if I'm filming for YouTube. Being able to have this small little pack that you wear across your body is so convenient. I keep my batteries, ND filters, SD cards, lens cloths, snacks, and so much more. And being able to have it all in one little spot is just really nice to have. Especially with the FX3, because it doesn't have internal ND, you need to swap filters pretty quickly. And having a fanny pack across your chest makes swapping filters a breeze. And then when it comes to lenses, I have a handful of different lenses to choose from. I have a Sony 20 millimeter that I use for YouTube A roll and for vlogs. And I also have a Sigma 24 70. That's an absolute workhorse of a lens. I reach for this lens anytime I'm working with another Sony shooter or if the client wants a modern look or if I need autofocus. And then I also have a full kit of contact size lenses, a handful of primes and one zoom. And I pretty much shoot on these lenses almost all the time just because I absolutely love the contact size look. So these are all the accessories I use across all of my camera rigs. There's definitely new nuance and choice when it comes to the lenses, but pretty much all these accessories I use 100% of the time. So this right here is my minimal rig. This setup is my go-to for anything for daily life, YouTube, or travel related. My main goal with this kit is to keep things small and only have the bare essentials. For this kit, I have two general directions, one without a cage and one with the tilt to full cage. I love using the FX3 without a cage because it gives me the opportunity to use my Peak Design anchors and it's just such a small and compact kit. This tilt to full cage is super clutch because it gives you a bunch of different features. My favorite thing about this cage is that there's a built-in side handle, which makes handheld shooting a lot easier. And it's often more comfortable too because you can have your hand resting against the strap. There's also tons of different mounting holes, an extra cold shoe on the left side, and there's a longer built-in arca plate which makes mounting to a tripod quick and easy and sturdy. It does add some weight and more footprint to the setup, but I choose these different directions generally on how I'm feeling. This minimal rig is just so compact and it really brings me back to the good old days of shooting with my A6500, and I really miss those days. For audio, I really enjoy using the Sony B10 microphone. It's small and compact, and it gets power and sends audio digitally through the multifunction hot shoe. And this means I don't have to worry about cables or recharging the microphone, which is really convenient. I also have the Rode VideoMic NTG that I've used 
plenty of times with the setup. It works great, it sounds amazing, but you do need to charge it and have a cable plugged into the side of the camera. So because of that, I've been primarily using the Sony B10 just for the simplicity. With this minimal rig, I often use a tripod. So I have the Siri ST124, which has been pretty solid for my needs. The nice thing about my Siri tripod is I have an archetype ball head on it, which means I can use it with a normal peak design plate or the tilt a full cage. For lensing, I cycle through all my lenses just depending on my needs. For YouTube B-roll, I'm always grabbing the Sigma 2470 because of the autofocus, the zoom range, and as well as the closer minimum focus distance, which makes getting tighter shots a lot easier. This lens isn't that ideal for travel because it's a bit big and heavy, but for pickup shots for B-roll, it is perfect. For any vlogging or YouTube setup, I'm always using my Sony 20mm. It's not too wide where there's tons of distortion, but it's wide enough to get yourself fully in frame, and it also makes smaller rooms feel a lot bigger. The Sony 20mm is a really small lens, which makes it the perfect vlogging lens for the Sony FX3. And alongside these two lenses, for anything travel or film related, I'm always using my contact size primes. These lenses are tiny, they're all manual, and they just look so good on these Sony sensors. I converted my contact lenses to EF so I can use them on any camera body that I have. And to mount them on my Sony FX3, I use the Novaflex EF to E adapter. It's a little expensive, but it's absolutely sturdy and there's no play in the lens mount at all. So that's all I can really ask for. So that's my minimal rig. I absolutely love it because it's just so simple. Everything I need is included in this package. I have my batteries, SD cards, lens, microphone, ND filters, and a camera strap. And lately my FX3 has been living in this rig for about 90% of the time since buying the C70. I really use my FX3 for client work nowadays, but when I do, I use these next two rigs. So next up is my hybrid rig. This is my go-to setup for anything run and gun, BTS, or dock, pretty much anything that needs professional grade audio. Like the minimal rig, I have two different directions when it comes to rigging, one without the cage and one with the cage. But this time I do default to the tilt to full cage because of the built-in side handle. It still comes down to how I'm feeling on that shoot, but I generally use the tilt to full cage with this setup. With this rig, I always use the Sony top handle because of those XLR inputs. And I always pair it with the Sennheiser MKE 600, which is my absolute favorite mic for dock style work. And I always put this dead cat on there just to make sure my audio is crisp and clear, especially when outdoors. The microphone mount on the Sony top panel is a weird diameter and most microphones don't fit inside of it. So in order for these microphones to fit, you'll need these rubber spacers. I bought a two pack of these on Amazon and I always keep an extra in my bag just in case I lose one. To connect this MKE 600, I use a small Cable Techniques XLR cable to keep the footprint low. I've always used cheaper, larger and thicker XLR cables, but they just get in the way when handheld shooting. This cable is small, it's long enough and it definitely stays out of the way, but it's pretty expensive expensive for an XLR cable, but I think it's worth the money to keep the kit nice and tidy. Another accessory I'll sometimes use is a Condor Blue handle extension. This handle makes it a lot easier to grip the camera as the stock handle is a bit small and there's a built-in NATO rail and other mounting holes to mount other accessories. And there's also a really sick cold shoe mount on the back. Anytime I'm doing dock style work, I'm often using lavaliers and I can easily place the receiver in that cold shoe on the back of the handle. With this setup, I rarely use an external monitor because I just love the LCD screen and how compact it is. It's definitely ideal to keep the kit small for these types of jobs and honestly the LCD screen isn't that bad to work with. I've really enjoyed the setup for the last couple of years. It's lightweight and it gives me a minimal feel that I had from working at the C70. You just have a top panel, a microphone, a lens, your SD cards and batteries and you're good to go. This is my go-to for everything that I shot with Samuel Elkins for his YouTube channel as well as any kind of event or BTS work that needs ambient audio. Whenever I'm using this rig I primarily use a Sigma 2470 because of the zoom range, the autofocus and the modern look. This hybrid kit is definitely one of my favorite ways to rig up the FX3 because it gives you a top panel, solid audio options, and it's still in such a small compact setup. But this rig never felt proper for my run and gun commercial jobs. And lastly, this is my full rig. This is my go-to setup for any serious commercial shoot whenever I need a solid and compact setup with tons of support. This setup always starts off with the Tilta full cage because it gives me the support and all the mounting points that I need. For the majority of shoots, I use this Tilta top handle because it's small and compact and it gives me two cold shoe mounts on top. This handle also rotates, so if you need to shoot vertically, it's pretty clutch there. The Tilta top handle screws into this top plate that comes with the cage and that top plate mounts directly to the two quarter 20 holes on the FX3. This really makes it a sturdy connection, which is great for heavier setups. I prefer this handle to the Sony top handle primarily because it keeps the rig short and small and I don't have to worry about breaking the audio unit because the Sony top handle is really fragile. It's for sure a compromise though because I end up losing the XLR inputs. So because I don't have those inputs, I still need a microphone. So I use this Rode VideoMic NTG which fits perfectly in this cold shoe on the Tilta cage. This mic is pretty solid and it stays out of the way but it's for sure not as good as the MKE 600. With this full rig, I for sure want all day power which means I need a V-mount battery. And to attach this to my rig, I need a base 
base plate, V-mount plate, and carbon fiber rods. I use the base plate from Tilta. It's great because there's a quick release on it to make setup and tear down a lot quicker. I also have these nine inch carbon fiber rods from Small Rig and I attach the Tilta V-mount plate to it so I can mount the battery. The V-mount battery that I use is this 98 watt hour FX Lion 902. It has D-tap and a handful of other USB-C ports, which is pretty convenient. To connect this battery to the FX3, I have this Conor Blue USB-C to USB-C cable and I've had no issues with it so far. This V-mount is pretty great because it usually gives me all day power when only powering the FX3. To keep my cables neat, I use these little organizers from Sprig. They screw directly into the quarter 20 holes on my rig, and I can just feed my cables through it to keep everything tidy. And now because my rig has these rods, I can use a follow focus if I wanted to. I never use them with modern lenses because manual focusing on them always just feels off. Sometimes I'll use it with my contact Zeiss lenses because I have gears on them and the focus throw is long and smooth. But it just depends on how I'm feeling. I do enjoy pulling focus from the barrel and adding the follow focus adds a bit more weight to the setup. For most jobs, I run this rig as is, and it's been a solid setup for my needs, but there are certain jobs where I need an external monitor to make composing and focusing a lot easier. So for these jobs, I love using the small HD 702 touch because it's sharp, easy to use, and has great tools and the image is extremely accurate. And I can power it with MPF batteries or through my V-mount with a D-tap cable. It really depends on the job. The MPF batteries are easy to use, but they do add weight up top. And the D-tap cable makes it a lot lighter, but I do lose battery life quicker than just powering the camera solely with the V-mount. But all in all, the 702 touch is a fantastic monitor. It's seven inches, as incredible battery life, but it does get a little bit large for this FX3 setup. So I do think adding a five inch monitor to my kit would make it a lot easier to bring when I'm going out into the field. There are certain jobs where I need XLR audio. So I'll swap out the Tilted top handle and the VideoMic NTG for the Sony top handle and the MKE 600. Whenever I do this, I'm always rocking the Condor Blue handle extension because this rig gets pretty heavy. For lenses, it really just depends on what I'm shooting. I love using the Segment 24 to 70 and my contacts lenses with the setup, but it really just comes down to the nuance if I need autofocus or a vintage look. Because this rig is so heavy, I can't use my Siri travel tripod, so I need to use a larger video tripod. I have this Manfrotto video tripod that I've had for years. It's clunky, but it gets the job done. So because of this, I need to use a Manfrotto tripod plate underneath the tilted base plate, which is fine because now I have a flat surface underneath it. So that's my full rig. It's my favorite setup for any serious gig, especially when I need all day power or an external monitor. It feels really tight and refined, and having that side strap on the tilted cage makes holding it so comfortable. This full rig is really fun to customize depending on the job, and I can mix and match all my accessories to really help support my needs. So as you can see, the Sony FX3 can take on a handful of different forms, and it's so convenient having a camera this versatile because with all the different jobs I'm getting, I know that the Sony FX3 will be a great choice for pretty much all of them. Of course, there's some compromises with the lack of internal ND, but the FX3 makes up for it with the small size and the dual base ISO and so many more features in it. And for me, I'm always getting different genres and styles of jobs, and being able to have one camera that can pretty much do it all is a really great thing to have in my camera kit. Being able to run the FX3 just tiny bare bones straight out of the box always blows my mind because this camera packs such a big punch, but you could strip it down so small and just have a tiny lens, internal battery, SD card, throw on some ND filters and you're good to go. For me, the C70 is a phenomenal camera, but when you strip it down to the out of the box configuration, it's still a pretty big camera, all things considered. And the FX3, I feel like is pretty comparable with the C70 in terms of the image, but being able to have something that you could pretty much almost fit in your pocket and pack that much of a punch is, it just keeps blowing my mind time and time again about the FX3. And I just love how the FX3 is when it's fully rigged up. A lot of the times I'm pretty much only shooting with the LCD screen and it's just such a tight little kit. When I have the FX3 in a full rig, it just feels a lot nicer for handheld shooting. And it honestly looks nicer too because the FX3 is such a light camera. You kind of need that weight for that really nice smooth handheld look. And the nice thing about the FX3 is that I can use it in all these different configurations and it's still gonna perform well for me. I just love this camera so much and it's easily the most versatile camera that I've ever used. This camera has changed so much in the direction of my career and even though I have the Canon C70 that I use for primarily all my client work now, having the FX3 as a backup camera for those specific Sony shoots or just using it primarily for YouTube is still such a fun thing to have. The FX3 is so powerful and it gives me the image quality and workflow that I want in this tiny little package that's so easy to bring around. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any questions about the accessories or the rigs that I have for my FX3, please leave them down below or send me a DM. And if you have a Sony FX3 yourself, I'd love to hear about the different setups you use with it. I wanna see if you guys use it in the minimal and the full rig and the hybrid setup as well. Pretty curious about that. So yeah, that's pretty much it. The FX3 is a fantastic, versatile camera and I highly recommend it. As you saw with the different rigs that I have with it, you can use it in a variety of different styles of shoots and it will perform. So yeah, with all that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Take it easy. Peace.